Hello and welcome to the webinar. This is 10 customer communication takeaways from the 2019 NIADA convention. I'm your host of the webinar, Keith Hitchcock, digital content producer here at ZipWhip. And this webinar series is designed to help business professionals like yourself with their customer communication strategies. We offer you practical tips and tools, resources, high level thought to help you with your business goals. This week, uh, let's talk about the most important customer communication takeaways from this year's NIADA convention. Um, to help me do that is the very great uh, senior account executive, Leela Mozaferian, and I'm gonna bring her on right now so she can tell you a little more about herself. Leela, welcome to the webinar. Um, Thank you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I'm a senior account executive here at ZipWhip. Um, I've been with the company for about three years, um, focusing specifically within the automotive space. Um, so that could range anywhere from the new car industry to the used car industry, um, RV stores, power sports, basically anyone in the auto space I've been working on um, selling text messaging to them, whether they're small shops or huge franchises, um, just kind of having that experience on the communication side. Excellent. Well, you were the per uh, perfect person to give us the content that we're, we're going for today, so I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. So we have uh, a lot of content to get to, So, uh, but briefly I want to talk about the agenda. There's some housekeeping here. If you're new to the GoToWebinar tool, there is a control panel off to one side where you're able to engage with uh, the audio if you need to adjust your audio, the, the levels of it or the device you're listening from. Um, and there's also a place to drop questions and comments. Now it says questions, but uh, we like comments as well. So feel free to toss whatever's on your mind in there. We will have a dedicated uh, live Q&A towards the end of our half hour presentation with you. As a thank you to you for uh, not only attending, um, uh, we we will send to you a, uh, and filling out the survey, that's, that's, what, that's what you're doing at the end. Uh, we're going to send you a copy of the slides and the video recording of this, so you can feel free to share this with your team or review it at a later time. So, with all of that, are you ready to dive in? Stoked. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, so, talk to us. You went to NIADA. How was it? It was great. So, I have been to NIADA in the past as an attendee, um, mm -hmm. but this was our first time going as ZipWhip, as exhibitors, and I yeah. think the really exciting thing was that I had um, Jeff our other uh, automotive specialists here at ZipWhip and Cassie, our team lead there they um, are. in the middle, uh, attend um, with me. And so I think it was just really exciting because in the past I got an opportunity to see what the show is all about, meet with current customers. Um, but this year exhibiting, just seeing our current customers come to the booth, bring their friends, um, you know, just have the amount of interest that comes with texting, I think, yeah. was just so much higher than we've seen in like previous years, which was just really exciting for us. And then also meeting with um, new vendors that we can partner with to hopefully make it more streamlined um, in all avenues. So it was just a great show. I was, I loved it. I thought it was really fun. Awesome. Well, and you, t you uh, apparently came back with a lot of knowledge, a lot of takeaways from this, <laughs> and you're uh, ready to share them with us. You, we've, we've had a, a chat about this, so... Uh, I already know it's great content um, that everyone should be excited about. So let's dive in to takeaway number one. Tell, tell us about this. Yeah, so I think that, you know, obviously all of you know that automotive is a very cutthroat industry. Um, keeping up with technology is one of the most important ways of simply gaining business and just mm -hmm. keeping up with not only selling new cars, but servicing those cars, financing those cars. Um, and, you know, like with not only just the communication side, but with the CRM side, hiring the right people, having the right teams in place. Yeah. And one of the biggest, you know, things is keeping up with that is ensuring that you're doing it early on. Right. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to play catch up and implement tools that you see is working, I think it's really a matter of getting ahead of the game. And that's one of the key takeaways, I would say, just keeping up. Um, and one of the simple ways of doing that, obviously, is attending shows like NIADA, but also making sure that you are a part of a 20 group, that you're following thought leaders on LinkedIn, that you're gaining this knowledge from those around you ahead of time, um, so that you're not just targeting your goals for 2019, but that you're looking, you know, three years or five years in advance of what's going to happen next. There were people, you know, laughing at us three years ago about texting, and now it's one of the primary ways of communicating. Right. And so for the, those who are catching up, it slows down their workflow. Mm -hmm. So I think just making sure that you keep 
keep up with the CRM tools, the training that you're doing with your teams, the consistency and the messaging, and just implementing that type of technology early on versus trying to play catch up was, you know, really important. Yeah, things change so quickly these days in the tech and the communication space. So yeah, just staying on top of it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. That's a good one to start with. Let's move on to takeaway number two. Yeah, so one of the biggest things here is, you know, three years ago, we focused on phone calls, emails, mailing out flyers, snail mail, uh, radio ads, uh, bulletin boards, all sorts of things to get folks into the store. Simply having a big dealership obviously just brings people in. But in today's world, as we all know, it's all about being online. Everyone can see the pricing, they can see the reviews that you have, and they can, you know, do a breakdown of where can I purchase a cheaper car? Where can I get better financing? Mm. So I think just being aware that the communication channels have changed so much throughout the last three years um, and just the amount of like competitors that are out there is no longer just business to business, but from the consumer standpoint as well. So one of the things that you know I walked away with was meeting um, a vendor from OfferUp, for example, that was originally, I think, more focused on consumer to consumers where you can sell they're your used items or you know new items that you just want to sell to someone else or through Facebook Marketplace, that's more common. Mm -hmm. um, but in today's world, if you're not posting your cars on Facebook Marketplace or eBay Motors or even OfferUp in this case, you're going to fall behind because on those social avenues, it's not just you know competing with other businesses, you're also competing with other consumers that um, are gonna maybe sell their used cars versus having you sell them first on that Facebook page and they can see what's going on um, mm -hmm. with the exact pricing bottle and you know get away with it that way. Yeah. Um, and like I said, right, like three years ago, you go to these shows and a lot of it was more um, you know technology that was just kind of understood by automotive for years and years and years mm -hmm. but there's just been such a drastic shift in the last three years mm -hmm. and just realizing that you know um now it's not just about standing there and having someone come to you it's about engaging through all sorts of communication avenues and making sure that you stay up to date with what those are um i would say you know i think the perfect example is i had someone literally laugh in my face three years ago when we talked about texting mm -hmm. and now everyone's like okay what kind of texting can i choose from because there's so many different ways that you could do it from a crm tool or from a third-party vendor um, or just even like through a personal cell phone where yeah. before it was just not a need yeah. so just understanding that you know it's changed um and how to really go online with everything if you're not already there yeah perfect okay yeah Things, like we said, things changed so quickly in just three years. Uh, okay, let's move on to takeaway number three. This is the importance of seamless communication channels. Tell us about that. Yeah, so obviously, you know, there's all sorts of ways that you can, you know, communicate with customers and just saying make a seamless experience is not that easy. It seems mm. like a very simple concept, but it's very complex. Um, you know, I had someone come to our booth and I don't, I'm not sure what he thought we were doing there, but he just was like, how can I make it convenient for customers to reach me? And I think one of the main things that we all need to understand is not just providing avenues such as chatbots, um, you know, call tracking numbers, social media avenues through YouTube or Google or Facebook or Instagram, but also making sure that it's seamless in the sense that when they reach out to you, someone immediately responds, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want to just provide these tools and have someone reach back out a week later um, yeah. when they've already, you know, maybe messaged a few other businesses at the right. same time. They care about that response time. And then from there, the nice thing is you can get analytics. Where should you be funding the advertising that you're doing today to create that engagement? If you know you're targeting a specific region or a specific age group or a specific audience, you want to target that, you know, type of communication channel to those specific people in the right ways. Um, so while, you know, chatbot might be good for one group of people, Facebook might be the perfect avenue for something else. And that's where you can throw more of your money of advertising mm -hmm. um, in so that you know you can get those analytics and continually grow and continually um, keep up with that. But I would say one of the biggest issues today in automotive that we're realizing is that we're providing all of these ways for folks to reach out, but there's not necessarily a way of getting back to them because we're mm -hmm. trying to engage and listen to the customers um, and provide them everything that they want. But we have to make sure on our end that we're not only tracking and responding, but measuring those analytics to improve um, our communication in the future so that it is seamless, it's streamlined, um, it's one way easy to, <laughs> to reach out. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, that seems like, I, I keep on hearing that in, in various industries and, you know, in the, in, in the communication space of essentially making it easy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
how, how do I call you? How do I email you? How do I text you? How do I find you on social media? And just making it such, and that's, I think that speaks to the seamless is, is making it easy. Yeah, and I'll um, go over some like more details on that. But I think, you know, for example, with that gentleman, we pulled up his website. Nowhere on the website was a phone number. I had to go to mm. the about us and then find contact us. There's mm. one number there, a separate number at the very, very bottom of the page that was just the fax line. Um, and then also just kind of like looking at where do I email if I wanted to email yeah. you. And there's this form that I can fill out, but where does that go? And right. why is it not asking me for my email when I want to email you? It's only asking for my phone number. Yeah. Um, so just understanding that making it clear to the customer on the websites, you know, bare minimum, have your website show clearly how can they reach out to you immediately when they're already engaged with you know your the cars that you have on the lot yeah first things first okay <laughs> takeaway number four five star customer experience in 2019 what is this leila yeah so i think for those of you in the new car space you know that on the service side the csi so that customer survey index is really important to engage with customers after they get service done to make sure they had a five star experience um, for obvious reasons that we all know um, and just getting, you know, uh, good ratings and, you know, making sure that not only do they come back, but you get more funding um, in auto for getting good CSI scores. So it's mm -hmm. really important to big OEMs. But for the used car space, I think one of the things we focused on at NIEDA was the Google reviews, the Yelp reviews, the Facebook reviews mm -hmm. um, that are going online today. And I think there's a few parts to this. So there's, you know, one, as a millennial, when I go onto your website and, or let's just say I Google your store and I see that you have five total reviews, and it's five out of five. To me, I might think, okay, you have five employees, so maybe that's where you're getting your reviews from. But I might go to another website that has, let's say, um, a thousand reviews, but they have a 4.3. I can read through, th read through those reviews, um, see what is you know, great about your store, maybe places you can improve on. Um, but I think just making sure that you provide that five-star experience and you ask for that feedback. And yeah. once you get that feedback internally, I think making sure that they post it online when they have a great experience. Because we all know that the only time someone goes online, majority of the time, it's because they had a bad experience. Mm -hmm. And we just don't want that for um, any of the stores that we work with, obviously. We want to provide a great experience and we want other customers to know that it was a great experience. Um, and we saw you know, different vendors who literally focus on strictly getting reviews mm. um, in any fashion that they can. And so I think increasing um, your Google reviews or any kind of reviews that you're doing online, but also making sure that internally you're tracking you know, what went wrong and how can you coach the team to make it better so that you can continue to provide better um, experiences in the future. Um, is just really important in any way that you do it. If you're sending out emails, if you're picking up the phone, if you're sending a text, if you're messaging them on social media, it doesn't matter if you see it, engaging with them if something went wrong and just following up on those are really important. Mm -hmm. Cool, good one. <laughs> okay, we, we're blazing through these. So are you keeping up out there? We're, we are moving on to takeaway number five. Tell us about this, Leela. This is the changes needed to bridge the generational gap. Yeah, so I think, you know, we all know that today in automotive, um, one of the generations that we're targeting is the millennials. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there's a lot to say, uh, there's a lot of mixed feelings about the millennials yeah. um, and the way that we're targeting them. Step one is going again all online versus, you know, the um, methods that we used to use previously. But also, you know, when I attended RVDA last year, um, at the end of the year last year, the guest speaker, the keynote speaker is focused specifically on different types of generations and how to target them. And in today's world, like, one of the main things that he mentioned was if you want to reach out to a millennial, text them. But if you want to reach out to like this other group, then email them. And so I think it's really important to understand where the change is going and also planning again five or even ten years down the road what is it going to look like in the future um, and you know making sure that you can't necessarily cheat things anymore right i think when information is online and the buying model completely has changed with an automotive mm -hmm. it's really important to target all sorts of generations so that you know even if i'm the millennial but my you know mom's gonna buy me the car to target her specific needs and i might prefer to be text messaged or sent an email but she primarily picks up the phone and talks mm -hmm. that way mm -hmm. and so having those different avenues and making sure that um you know you provide those different avenues for the entire family so yeah. to speak um, and all the generations that come within that family i think is really important um and just again getting those analytics you'll have a much more seamless time understanding what 
do each target market, what does each target market need in order to have better communication with them in order to bridge that gap? Yeah, it doesn't always break down uh, according to your generation. I know, you know, yeah. there's there's younger people who want to email and there's older people who want to text, but, but I think the main point, uh, if I'm hearing right, is mm -hmm. just understanding that there are that you need to have a number of communication channels and understand that someone might have a different preference yep. of, of communicating yeah exactly all right cool Great. I'm learning something <laughs> uh, all right let's move on to uh, takeaway number six the, these are the communication essentials Leela yeah so there's a lot of different ways that you can communicate and i think just listing some of those off for those who maybe are more new to the social world um, on a lot of websites today if you see big franchises um, for example they have uh, facebook they have a google page they have youtube they have instagram um, they have a little chat bot that pops up they have call tracking numbers where you can reach different departments um, they have radio ads and i think there's so many different ways that you can generate inbound leads mm -hmm. um, but it's really understanding when to use what tool so i might come to your website i don't necessarily want to share my cell phone number yet and get spammed or anything like that and i have that fear in the back of my mind so i might chat in to make sure that, that car is still available um, and then at the end of our conversation i'm ready to go you do in-house financing i want to get my car i give you my cell phone number and i say please text me and if later that day I get a phone call, you know, to me it's I'm at work or you know with the kids or doing whatever I'm doing, I don't necessarily want to be communicating that way. Yeah. So it's not just providing all these avenues for them to reach out to, but making sure that you're reaching back out to them and how they prefer to be communicated. Mm. Because it might start off with me doing an anonymous phone call or going in through a chat bot or asking a question through a social media avenue. But in the long term, I might prefer to be communicated in a different way. Mm. Um, and then maybe after that, if I'm financing my car, but I say, hey, could you call me and just remind me that I have to fill out this paperwork because that way I'll remember it's really important, making sure that you're keeping up to date with each of your customers and engaging them in the way that they want to be communicated yeah. um, with. And not only just like right from the beginning, but also in the long term too. And, you know, they actually purchase their car and they want to get it serviced or financed or anything like that. Mm -hmm. There's so many, I mean, it's, it's, I'm glad you, you brought in this slide and, and, and just showing all the different tools and areas, platforms where we need to be. Do you feel, do you have any sense of like priority in these or is this kind of vary from business to business? Um, I'll have to be transparent. You know, I am biased. I would say texting is <laughs> the course. way to go. Um, I actually intentionally didn't put that on the slide because mm -hmm. I genuinely feel like, you know, three to five years ago when we spoke with customers, no one really um, understood in automotive the value of texting. Yeah. But today, anyone that I call or see um, at a show understands the value in some form of texting. And so even if that's through a personal cell phone, um, I think everyone understands that that is a primary way to communicate with people. There's no login like email. It's not like a phone call where it goes to voicemail. It's not like a chat bot where if I close my computer, you can't reach back out to me. Um, and so I actually intentionally didn't put that in the communication essentials just because I think it's one of the ways everyone naturally is going to communicate anyways. Yeah. Um, but I think that each of them bring value in different ways. There's honestly different regions that target things differently from the West Coast to the East Coast. Um, you know, it's just completely different. So I think yeah. it's understanding what your customer base looks like and listening to that feedback and targeting them that way. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, moving on to takeaway number seven. This is how to safeguard internal communication. What do you mean by that? So I think that, you know, for a lot of the folks who are attending today, your service managers or sales managers, general managers, owners, finance managers, um, and one of the most important things that I really want and hope that you take away from this is the importance of overseeing what goes on in your business. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when I call today and someone says, oh, I'm using my personal cell phone and my entire team has their own personal cell phones and they're communicating that way. That's fine to reach out to the customer, but you don't have the oversight to see what is going on with each of those conversation threads, right? Mm. You don't know what is being said. You can't coach. You don't know if there's a consistent message being sent. There's no form of having that managerial oversight. And it's not just important for that sale, but it's an accountability and liability situation that you might have three months or six months down the road. If mm. there's turnover, and as we know, obviously in auto, there's a lot of turnover. If someone leaves and you know they say something they shouldn't and a customer comes back to you, but you've never seen that thread, mm. it causes a lot of issues. Um, and obviously, you know, one of the bigger problems, I would say just right off the bat, is when those personal conversations are happening through any avenue, 
I'm taking that contact and that conversation with me to the next door that I go to, yeah. right? I'm not keeping it internal to your business where you want to continue that conversation, purchase, um, have them purchase another vehicle with you for their family member. They're going with that salesperson to another store instead of staying with your specific business. Um, so just understanding that, you know, coaching purposes, maybe you'll keep more employees that way. You'll teach them how to do better, um, you know, and just have that consistency in the messaging, especially if you're a part of a franchise, if you have multiple locations, because it's not just a matter of, you know, the sales or service or parts team or whatever to have a consistent message. It's also a matter of your business as a whole to have a consistent message, especially if other stores, um, a part of it, let's say your franchise are sending something and then you're sending something else. So just having that consistency and oversight. Yeah, it's an interesting nuanced point when it comes to implementing, you know, a, a business is starting getting going with texting. Mm -hmm. So, so interesting um, and such a good point. Yeah. Okay, takeaway number eight, making software changes uh, and implementation easy. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I think that, you know, when we're looking at um, getting new CRM tools or, um, you know, chat tools or any type of like communication that you're implementing, it's really important that you understand what are the goals for each of your team members and what are the goals that you have as like the business owner. Mm. Um, in this case, like my point to this really is that you need to understand how can you get your team to implement something because you might know that this software is going to help make you more money, but you have to motivate your team to use it. So when I do demos, for example, my goal is to take all the notes from the decision makers, understand what their 2019 goals um, and even, you know, 2020 goals are um, to see, you know, what do they want to see happen? Maybe that's yeah. manager oversight, compliance and security. But I know when I'm doing training, I have to focus on how can the salesperson sell more cars so they can make more money and, you know, keep their job. But also, like, how can the service team use this to have a more seamless experience to yeah. complete more repair orders and, you know, have a better experience so they get better scores when CSI comes into play. Mm. Um, and so just having either a partner when you're looking at vendors that do training, that have a success team, a support team that will help with the implementation process. Or I've worked with a lot of groups who have, you know, a specific person who does the training and onboarding, but focusing on giving them use cases that will get them success versus just, you know, handing them a random platform mm -hmm. and just wishing them luck. <laughs> right. Okay, we're going to move on to takeaway number nine, which is the inbound marketing tools in 2019. Yep. So I think we touched on this a little bit earlier. Um, there's a variety of ways that you can generate inbound leads, but you know, I think, um, and if we go to the next slide, actually, okay. I think we have some examples here. So I tried to pull up some different, um, you know, a franchise of Harley Davidson that I work with, um, an RV store, and then a new car industry. Um, and they all have a different way of communicating that they can be reached. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, what's not necessarily shown on here is that they all have some type of Facebook, they have some type of Google, they have some right. type of um, online, you know, portal for social media as well. But just making sure that when you're advertising, for example, that text icon, that you don't just have a text button and not illustrate that it's that phone number. Mm -hmm. On so many websites, you'll see, oh, text. And then I see that main phone number up there and I don't realize that I can call or text that line. I have to fill out that text form because it's a new number. Mm -hmm. um, and so making it very clear, like call us on this line, text us on this line, chat us here. If you click on the Facebook page and nothing loads, you know, that's a huge problem. It's better to just not have it there instead of having something that um, leads to an error page or um, something that doesn't exist, right? So don't just put it on there to have it, but making sure that it's very clear. So I think that top example with Big Sky is one of my favorites because it's yeah. very clear as to like what you can call or text. And then there's a button that they can click on. Um, and on the side of it, they have all sorts of social media avenues. And the other example here, again, you know, Harley Davidson, they're frenemies in some ways, right? They're competing, but they're all sending a consistent message in that they have some form of texting or they have some form of chat mm -hmm. or Facebook. And so they each make their own money in their own way, but they also have that brand consistency across locations. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. Last but not least, we're going to uh, do our last takeaway, which is uh, reaching communication goals for 2019 and 2020. Yeah. So I think if there's anything that you really take away from this webinar today, it's to, you know, one, go towards online, um, focusing your ad efforts online, um, really just trying to get those analytics and figure that out um, to better engage with your customers. But also keeping in mind that, you know, right now is the perfect time to do these things. Mm -hmm. The new car industry um, in this year's you know, economy has been going down, but the used car has just been going up. Mm -hmm. Obviously the profit margins are larger for the car sales um, in the used car space. So like 
understanding that like now is the perfect time. Listen to what your customers want and provide those so that you know long term um, within like let's just say the next year, but also three years or five years down the road, you implement these things now. Um, there isn't really that much of a wait period. And you know, going to a few of the workshops, that's one of the main things. It's not okay. Let's make a plan and implement it in a year from now because you're playing catch up. It's a matter of taking care of what you need to immediately so that you can look three years down the road and just making sure that you're taking advantage of the economy that's out there today for the yeah. used car industry. Yeah. Um, I think you got a lot of inspiration <laughs> and info at NIADA this year. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot <laughs> for sure. I mean, I've been literally selling texting to dealerships for three years, yeah. but I think it's just amazing like how much it's changed. Um, obviously, I think everyone out there are the experts, but you know, it's just, it's always exciting to like learn from other, um, you know, speakers or thought leaders, but also just the customers and getting the feedback of what's yeah. working and what's not. Yeah, cool. Okay, we're almost reaching our time, but we do have a few minutes for questions. So let us get to those and we'll get to as many as we can before our time is up. Uh, first question is, how is ZipWhip different from other texting vendors? Okay, so there are a lot of vendors out there, um, and I think that one of my main goals is to never speak poorly about another vendor. There's benefits, there's um, you know cons to every single vendor out there. I think depending on what you're looking for, the main difference with ZipWhip and other vendors is that we provide texting on your existing business phone number. So any landline, um, toll-free voice over IP number that has um, you know that you want activated for texting is the one we advertise. So when I Google your location or I visit your website, that's the number I can text on mm -hmm. instead of providing a new number for texting and saying, okay, only call me on this line. And then if you want to, you know, turn it into a phone call conversation, only like texting on that, right? right. So you're call me on this line and text me on that yeah. line. So just making sure that um, that you just get outside of features and functionalities and you know the support and training and everything else that we provide, just understanding that it really matters to provide a seamless experience on that same number that they can call that they can text as well. Ah, the seamless experience uh, takeaway. I'm, I'm hearing and echoes of that. Okay, uh, next question. Do you have a click, do you have a click to text on the website? Yes, so the examples that I showed um, earlier are essentially uh, an example of what that looks like. Yeah. But you can just put that click to text on your mobile optimized or your web optimized site. And then um, at any point, a customer can just click on it and text you. Okay, that sounds straightforward. Um, next question, uh, can we use this in sales, service and finance departments? Yes, so um, I know some vendors are customized to specific CRMs or departments. Um, with ZipWhip, again, it all goes by that phone number. So if you have a sales line and you have a separate service line, a separate finance line, um, we can activate any of those for texting and then do training to make sure that they understand the use cases that go within each of those departments mm -hmm. um, to have success in. But you can use this in your parts, in your BDC, um, any department that essentially wants to communicate with customers via text, we can activate. Um, and for those of you who don't know, we actually work with about 60 other industries from insurance companies to radio stations to veterinary clinics, medical offices. So really, we can activate pretty any business. Um, we can work with any business out there. Yeah, awesome. Okay, <laughs> I think we have time for one more question here. And uh, if we didn't get to your question, I promise we will get back to, to you after the fact. Mm -hmm. uh, Leela or her one of her uh, comrades will do that. Um, but let's do this. Can you send links to an online application to get approved for financing your car? Yes, you can definitely send okay. links. Um, so at any point, you know, hmm. you can send a link that goes straight to. Oh, via text they're talking about. Yeah. Like, okay. Yep. So that like on any cell phone today, um, let's say you're texting friends and family and you want to send them a link of a restaurant. It works the exact same way, but it's just a link of the finance application. Yeah. So today for the folks who are using this in the finance side, they'll send a link that goes straight to the website. They can put in you know, their online portal and fill out the application that way. Um, or if they wanna log into a current portal that they have and make a payment, they can just do that right from their website that syncs with their CRM or DMS tool or anything like that. Um, but you can definitely send links at any point. Okay, awesome. Thank you for those, all those questions. Um, we are in wrap up mode here. 
And it uh, looks like people can get in touch with you and you are encouraging that. Yes, of course. So if you have any questions or um, you'd like any resources or anything like that, we have a ton of information on our website. Um, but again, I and Jeff um, in this photo, he is also an automotive specialist here at ZipWhip, can answer any of your questions or get you the resources you need um, to ideally help with the communication standpoint. Yeah. Um, our contact information is there. We'll, uh, one of us will get back with you and just try to answer any questions that you have. Um, but I really appreciate your time and everyone else's time um, today and looking forward to reconnecting after this call. Awesome. Thank you Thank so you much so for much. being here, Leela. And I will wrap things up here by just reiterating that we do have a lot of resources on our website um, at uh, in the Resource Center. If you go to zipwhip.com, um, just look for the Resource Center. And in my follow-up email to this uh, webinar, I'll be sending uh, helpful links, hopefully, that will uh, connect you with, with those resources. We have a webinar coming up in late July that you might be interested in, so stay, uh, stay tuned for that. It's called Best Practices for Texting Your Customers, and if you want to um, be notified of that, be sure to sign up uh, for our, get on our, our email list. So thanks again for joining us. And uh, when we end the webinar, there's going to be a brief survey that pops up on your screen. Um, as a thank you for uh, filling that out. Well, I'll send you the, the video recording of this and the slides and look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.